So hello and welcome to Duddingston Village. Dating back to the 12th century, Duddingston is one of the oldest villages in Edinburgh. Situated on the south east side of Arthur's Seat, at the entrance to Holyrood Park. However, the first recorded name is between 1136 and 1147, and it was Treverlin. And the local of you may recognise the name as the same recently given to a newly created park, Treverlin Park which is on the old site of St John's Primary School and Portobello High School. The name Duddingston is said to have come from a Norman knight, Dodden de Doddingston, and various references start to appear from the 1150s onwards. For such a small village, it certainly has a rich history and plenty of things to see and do, so let's check them out. So this here is Duddingston Kirk, which is one of the oldest churches still in use in the east of Scotland. And the original building was built around 1124 and contained the chancel, nave, and a square tower. It's only the south wall remains of the original building and that's this one here behind me. And you can see the, the original entrance which is obviously long, long since been blocked up. But you can see the archway which is a key Norman architecture. You can see these chevron markings on the left door pillar along with the crucifixion of Christ. But here in the north wall is the present day entrance and that was unveiled in 1922 along with the plaque and memorial next to it for those that died in World War I. And the oak door is actually from the Duddingston estate and was provided by John Hay, who was a joiner JP and actually lost three sons in the war. A famous reverend of the church was John Thompson from around 1805 to 1840 and he gave rise to the popular Scottish saying that we're all joke of Thompson's bairns. So joke being John and Tam, of course, being Thompson. And he used to refer to his congregation as my bairns or my children. So the gatehouse you can see behind me was built in the early 19th century and formerly used to guard the graves against body snatchers, so relatives and elders of the church would guard the graves for around three weeks to ensure that those looking to steal bodies from the grave couldn't do so, as they often like to do at this time, to sell the bodies on to the medical profession for dissection and anatomy studies. Many of the tombs were protected by iron bars which you might have seen if you've visited a number of old graveyards across Edinburgh, so if you've, if you've wondered why then, then that's the reason to prevent the, the body snatchers and of course the most infamous of all were Burke and Hare. So these steps behind me that Ty's sitting on is the Laupin and Steen and it was actually used 
for those attending the sun Sunday service to dismount and mount their horses. This here behind me is the Dukes, or Iron Chain and Collar. And it was an instrument of correction or punishment between the 16th and 18th century where somebody would be strapped with that behind their, around their neck to shame them in public and to compound, compound matters. Usually, a member of the public would walk past and throw the rotten food at them. <laughs> Imagine that. So the kirk overlooks Duddingston Lock, which remains the largest freshwater lock in Edinburgh, spanning around 8 hectares, which is about 20 football pitches, but it's only about a maximum of 3 metres deep. So a bit of interest in history about the lock. In 1778, there was a dredger that was going around the lock, and it dredged up around 50 items. And those items include spears and daggers, amongst others. And that actually dates settlements around here to the Bronze Age. Now it's a nice spring day today, but in the 18th century the lock was actually really popular with skaters and curling as it used to freeze over and Duddingston was actually home to the first skating club Edinburgh Skating I believe around 16 or there's some debate either 1642 1742 or 1744 however it was definitely the first because the next one was in 1830 in London The lock is also famous for the painting the skating minister, the Reverend Robert Walker, who was a member of the Edinburgh Skating Club and also the minister of the Canongate Kirk. It was painted by Henry Rayburn. He was a famous painter and portrait painter to King George IV. Now, he was born in Stockbridge and you may recognise the surname of many of the streets that are named after him around the Stockbridge area today. Perhaps one of his most famous is that of Sir Walter Scott, of course the famous poet and writer. The skating club had its annual dinner in the Sheep's Heat and what they used to serve up was sheep's head and trotters. A mouth-watering dish, isn't it? <laughs> So the Sheep's Head Inn, said to be Scotland's oldest surviving pub, first established in 1360, although apparently the core of the building is from around the 1800s. So where did the Sheep's Head get its name? Well, there's a couple of theories about that. first one is that because sheep grazed on the banks of Arthur's Seat, and that Duddingston village was popular with butchers, that they would bring the sheep to Duddingston prior to being sold in Edinburgh, and thereafter use the heads of the sheep in many a culinary dish. And legend has it that they also used the heads as cobbles for their pathway, <laughs> although I can't find any evidence of that one. And the other suggestion is that in 1580, King James VI of Scotland gave an ornate ram's head to the place. Uh, I believe the original is now in Dalmeny House, and I think they've got a replica behind the bar in the, the pub now. Now on the subject of royalty, the sheep's head was popular with Mary, the Queen of Scots, because of its position halfway between Holyrood Palace and Craig Miller Castle that she would often pop in on her way to Craig Miller Castle 
for a game of Skittles. And that obviously, uh, our son James followed in her footsteps and the Skittle Alley actually still exists within the building. I believe it's the last of its kind in Scotland. So the pub's clearly played host to a number of regulars through its long, rich history. Uh, certainly back in the day, the Royal Archers, who are a ceremonial unit, a bodyguard of the Sovereign in Scotland, a number of city sheriffs, and also local regiments, including Duddingston and Pearsall Barracks. So yes, if you know Edinburgh and where Pearsall East and West tenements stand, that originally was a barracks. Oh my child, I know you heard and you can't let go. So there's an open and opposite the sheep's heat, and it leads you up to Dunningston community land. All the bed in the herd. Community land covers much of, most of, sort of Dunsapy Hill, has great views across the city and apparently the land was previously owned by the McEwen family. And you may recognise the McEwen family as famous Scottish brewers. It's thought that they lived in one of the larger houses around here, Bella Vista, and they also funded the construction of the McEwen Hall, the University of Edinburgh building in Potter Row in Edinburgh. It'll be right. This behind me here is actually the vegetable garden, which the community purchased the land for around six years ago. To be a good man inside, did everything. It's among many of the fantastic buildings, cottages, and Georgian villas that are in Duddingston Village. It's this one here that probably strikes the most resonance in Scottish history. As you can see, the plaque above the door, which reads, In this house, on 19 September 1745, Prince Charles Edward Stuart, otherwise known as Bonnie Prince Charlie, held his council of war before the Battle of Preston Pans. While his army, the Jacobites, who were allegedly camped on Dunsapy Lock, uh, Arthur's seat, Bonnie Prince Charlie was within coming up with his masterclass plan to defeat the English Redcoats in the Battle of Preston Pans. You can actually go and see a reenactment of the battle which takes place every year. Hopefully again it will start up this, this year again, post-Covid. On the actual battleground that it took place. This here is Dr. Neil's garden. It was in 1963 that husband and wife, Andrew and Nancy Neil, began cultivating what was once called the calves field. And it was used initially for grazing calves and geese. But because of the rocky surface, it made unsuitable for crops. And it offers great views across Duddingston Lock. Also within is Thompson's Tower, which was designed by William Playfair, who was an Edinburgh-renowned architect. It was built in 1825 for Duddingston Curling Society to store its curling stones. Well, that was Duddingston Village. I hope you enjoyed exploring it as much as I did, and I'll see you next time. We've got to go through this.